Hello! Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to explain the pathogenesis of the hepatic encephalopathy. So, how is it possible that from a liver disease we have neurological signs? Well, the liver is the first organ that receives the blood from the intestine with all the substances just absorbed. And its task is to detoxify this blood from dangerous substances and metabolize nutrients. One of the main causes of neurologic signs is the ammonia that the liver should convert into urea. But if the liver doesn't work, the ammonia remains in the blood and can cross the blood-brain barrier where it inhibits and impedes the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. In the central nervous system, astrocytes try to eliminate the ammonia by combining it with glutamate. But this leads to the production of glutamine, which is extremely toxic for neuronal cells and causes the development of Alzheimer's type 2 astrocytes that are uh, swollen cells with enlarged nuclei and lack of cytoplasm. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, so in the acute stages, uh, the hyperactivity of glutamate causes excitatory signs. But in more chronic stages, the continued arrival of ammonia to the brain causes poor stage of glutamate reservoirs to lethargy. Furthermore, the presence of ammonia into the central nervous system causes an inflammatory reaction with production of cytokines and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which causes further damage to neuronal tissue, stimulate the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, increase uh, of its receptors, and production of natural benzodiazepines, which also have an agonistic effect on GABA receptors. For this reason, it's contraindicated administered benzodiazepines in horses with hepatic diseases. Ammonia also leads to the production of reactive oxygen species that aggravates the neuronal damage. Other substances that come from the intestine and due to the liver disease can reach directly the central nervous system are phenols, short-chain fatty acids and mercaptans, which also disrupt the sodium potassium ATPase pump. But this is not all. Due to the liver disease, pancreas produces glucagon that induces muscle catabolism and release of amino acids. Now, branched chain amino acids are metabolized within the muscle, but aromatic amino acids should be metabolized by the liver that cannot this also reach the central nervous system. Tryptophan is converted into the inhibitory neurotransmitter serotonin, while other amino acids are converted into false neurotransmitters that take the place of norepinephrine and dopamine to prevent their activity. As a protective mechanism, the brain produces neurosteroids, but these also enhance the activity of GABA. Moreover, there can also be alteration of the broad-brain barrier and of cerebral metabolism, with cerebral hypertension and edema. Ok, a few more things. The failure of cancer cells which are the macrophages within the liver tissue, causes the development of endotoxemia that will worsen the production of cytokines. The liver also produces coagulation factors, which if disease can lead to hemorrhages and disseminated intravascular coagulation. If there is decreased production of bile acids, then the intestine cannot absorb lipids if the horse may develop colic, diarrhea and steatorrhea. Finally, the lack of metabolism of phyloerythrin, that is a metabolite produced in the intestine as a result of bacterial degradation of chlorophyll, 
can lead to the accumulation of filoerythrin in the skin and photosensitization. Well, more or less, this is what happens when there is a severe liver disease. I hope that it was clear. In the next video, we will see which blood analysis can help us to detect a liver disease. If you like the video, press like. And if you want to watch more videos, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so that you will get a notification every time that I upload a new video. See you next time. Bye!